And every culture, no matter where you're from, has a tradition of food and healing. Hello world, I'm Hoal Agrivi, founder and CEO of Powbox, and we're here in bright Portland with Ellen Goldsmith, co-founder of Pearl Natural Health. Ellen, thanks for having us over today. Hey, thank you for inviting me to speak with you today. Can you uh, tell me more about your clinic? Yes, we're a naturopathic acupuncture and Chinese medicine clinic in downtown Portland, Oregon. We've been around since 2001. We pride ourselves on collaboration, meaning that our naturopathic physicians and acupuncturists work together to deliver optimal patient care for people uh, seeking solutions, really, for their health concerns and problems. Got it. And what sort of uh, conditions do you folks treat? What, what's that average patient? We get a lot of people who are coming here kind of at the, I would say, down the road from conventional care, meaning they haven't found the solutions that they need with their primary care physician or their medical specialist. And so what we're treating a lot these days are GI problems, ulcerative colitis, inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's disease, irritable bowel syndrome. And there's a, another syndrome we're teaching, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which is like, what is that? It's an overgrowth of, of bacteria and flora in the uh, small intestine that cause a lot of problems that people have that really go undiagnosed. You know, people who are complaining about bloating and gas and irregular uh, bowel movements and brain fog, uh, you know, a lot of these different issues are really related to digestive issues. We're treating a lot of thyroid problems, whether it be hypo or hyperthyroid. We're treating a lot of people with unexplained fatigue that can be related back to SIBO, we call it, or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, or some kind of dysfunction in the digestive tract. As an acupuncturist, of course, a lot of people walk through my door because of pain. That's what acupuncture is really well known for. And once they're in the room and we are treating their physical pain, whether it be an injury or chronic back pain, neck pain, headaches, even abdominal pain, we start to find out there are other things going on as well. A lot of stress syndromes, of course, make anything worse. So acupuncture is known for its kind of relaxation and restorative impact on a person. So you've combined uh, several fields together to have this uh, totally unique solution, it sounds like. You know, a lot of um, healthcare is, is really practiced in silos, meaning you go to your gastroenterologist, you go to your endocrinologist, you go to your PCP, and there hasn't been in the past a lot of communication between the two. So so we really do that. Like we, you know, one person may see me and I may recommend that they see a Dr. Weiner, or Dr. Head, or Dr. Breen, or other physicians in the clinic if I feel like there's something that would be better served. We'll refer out to specialists and we have a group of specialists that we work with. And we also send those notes that we take to the conventional medical doctors because we want them to realize we are really working diligently to help solve problems. And together we can work from our own specialty and really not do one or the other, but both to really help the patient because it really is the person who's suffering that, that needs the care. And do you folks take insurance? That's an always interesting question because people say, do you take insurance? And I say, well, is your insurance have naturopathic and acupuncture coverage and that's the real question and we're always encouraging our patients to reach out to their HR person or their insurance company and really ask for these things we are cost effective we are so much cheaper than conventional medicine and we spend a lot of time with patients talking about their lives their lifestyle um, educating them really taking the role of dottore which the original word means to teach you know to help people really make changes and support them in that process so that as they get better, they also have tools, skills, resources to draw upon that they can bring forward into their lives. So we will, if your insurance covers that, we are happy to build people's insurance, but not all insurance covers effectively, meaning you only get a limited portion of visits for naturopathic or acupuncture per year. They'll only pay a certain amount. They won't pay certain things. So again, we really encourage people to really ask for it because it is part of the health system.
So HIPAA, are, do you guys need to abide by Absolutely. HIPAA? Absolutely. We use electronic health records. We have HIPAA policies in place. We do OSHA trainings, which is for health and safety of our employees on site. We um, follow all the kinds of regulations that are necessary to have a health and medical clinic so that our patients are safe. Because patient safety and confidentiality are the things we really hold highest, yeah. What was life like before using Powbox for your encrypted email? We didn't have encrypted email so that was a big problem and you know because the iPhone is just an extension of your brain these days people started emailing us a lot of questions sensitive questions and we would say we, we just can't answer your questions via email because you know you need to come in we really do want people to come in because a lot of questions that people have now that they send over email are very detailed sensitive questions so before Pobox it was a little like uh, how do we deal with this because you know that's how people like to communicate Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And what's the workflow been like uh, since having Powerbox? Well, I mean, I don't think, you know, it's a kind of invisible thing. I mean, it's not like the workflow is different. We are assured that our emails are encrypted, we have confidence, and we hope that, you know, all exchanges through email is confidential now. And so that is a really, really good thing that we are very happy for. Awesome. Ellen, can you tell me about your book? Yes, I wrote Nutritional Healing with Chinese Medicine, which has also 175 seasonal recipes for people. It really is an extension of the work that I've done studying Chinese and Asian medicine for the past 30 years. And the primary thing in life, the most essential thing we do to uh, ensure our health is breathe, move, and eat. We will eat every single day. And we see a lot of diseases that have or chronic diseases, whether it be diabetes, pediatric diabetes, pediatric cardiac issues. These are things that never were, only on the rare occasion would occur with young people, but with the onslaught of processed food, high fructose corn syrup, artificial additives, etc., pesticide toxins, etc., that we imbibe through our food, we've seen a rise in, in chronic diseases that are well prevented by the food we eat. Hmm. And every culture, no matter where you're from, has a tradition of food and healing. And Chinese medicine, what they did was they wrote it down, they codified it, they created a system, and we still have access to that material. And that's the beautiful thing. And we also see that in uh, Chinese culture, You've heard of the Silk Road, mm -hmm. right? So there was that Silk Road of trade that went all through Asia, Southern Asia, into India, all the way into the Middle East, into Iran, up into Southern Spain. And what they brought with them was not only their, their items, right, that they had, but their medicine. And so we see in Iran, for instance, there is a tradition of healing with food that is very parallel to Chinese medicine. So as an acupuncturist, and because for my own health and what I see in my patients is that when you change the way you eat, you actually can change the way you feel. You improve health conditions. And, and especially here in our clinic where we do so much work with gastrointestinal, you know, you can't just take medicine, you have to change the way you eat. And I wanted to make this accessible to people. I wanted people from all culture to read it and go, oh, I get it because the principles in Chinese medicine are not they're they're deep and esoteric when you get into them but they belong to nature so we know when we feel too cold we know when we feel too hot right we know when we feel too dried out we know when we feel so lethargic and heavy we call that damp in Chinese medicine and all of those things exist so I wanted to take those principles and and educate people and then have them get in the kitchen and work with those things and and really start to see how it feels to eat in a way that is attuned not only to who we are at that time but also to the season that we're in so that's why I have all these recipes organized by the season and how long did it take you to write it took me a year and a half yeah a lot of hard work and I worked with a recipe developer to develop recipes and, and use foods that had therapeutic value. Published author, that's so cool. Yeah, it's a really, really exciting. I'd like to do that one day. Actually, do it, go yeah. for it. Yeah. Does Amazon count? <laughs> <laughs> Self-publish? No, self-publish is good. I mean, I was lucky enough to have a publisher, so yeah. I'm, I'm really grateful for that. Yeah. That's really cool. Where do you see the future of your industry going? Well, it's, that's a really interesting question because we've had a lot of influence on medicine itself. If you look into medical schools throughout the country, I think there are over 65 medical studies programs in med conventional medical schools. I myself teach um, a 
to fellows who are conventional medical professionals through an organization called AIHM. So people want what we know because they understand that conventional medicine has its limitations. You can only get so far with prescriptions, but if people don't have lifestyle changes and you know, you're not really working with the whole person, it's, it's a difficult thing. So we've had a lot of influence on conventional medicine. We're in some hospitals like the Cleveland Clinic, a very renowned clinic, has a whole Chinese herbal medicinary or a pharmacy. They use acupuncture. Sloan Kettering in New York uses acupuncture and herbs in their cancer treatment. The danger is, is that we would get swallowed up by conventional medical professionals. So they would kind of cherry pick what we know and not do the in-depth training. Because the where we differ with conventional medicine is that we know that our vital force in India, in yoga, you'd call it prana, in Chinese medicine we call it chi, in Japanese we call it ki. We know that that is what we have to reconstruct or promote. So that's where looking to do no harm, but also to protect and promote the vital force that each of us has. That's our birthright. And each of our vital force is different. Hmm. What podcasts are you listening to? You know, when I have time, well, I have my own radio show that I no do. Way. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm a, I had a podcast for a while where I really wanted to bring ideas forward to people that were useful for them and create resources for people in terms of, again, accessing their health. And now I, I have a show I'm on once a month on KBU, which is community radio in Portland, where I interview experts in the field, from well-known authors to people who are really doing on-the-ground work, helping people resolve, again, serious health conditions, anything from Lyme disease to trauma to uh, women's health to just interviewed a woman who talked about pesticides and toxins and the influence of all the products we use in our home. So I, I do that. And then when I have time, I love to listen to Radio Lab out of New York City. It's a great little science show that they have, and it's very very interesting, very well done. I love the TED Radio Hour. Oh, they have one? Yeah, they have a TED Radio Hour where Guy Raz takes snippets of different TED Talks around a certain topic. So, he, like, he did one thing on forgiveness, and he had all these different elements, you know, different speakers talking about different elements of that. You know, I'll listen to Terry Gross. Fresh Air. Fresh Air. One and, of the best um, ones out there. Yeah, so those are the ones, like, I've kind of been listening to. You know, I've just been so busy, I haven't had a chance to put on my headset and listen. And your radio show, how long, is it half an hour, hour? It's a half hour show. Oh. It airs live. So I'm live on with guests, and then I then it streams over the website. Is that FM station? Yes, KBOO dot FM, oh. Health Watch. How did you um, get the show? Did you pitch them or? No, actually they came to me. I have a, a colleague of mine who's done the show for 15 years, Dr. David Naiman, who now doesn't, actually he does a great podcast called Between the Covers. I'll put a plug in for him. It's great. a literary podcast that's really wonderful. And he was looking to kind of switch up what he was doing and step back from Health Watch. And I'd been on his show a bunch of times and I love radio. I just, I've always loved radio. I just think it's great. And uh, he asked me if I'd be interested in, in taking over for him. And I said, absolutely, with pleasure. Good for business? Sometimes. It depends if I promote it enough. Mm. It depends. I can't promote myself on it, but you know, I hope that it, it raises my profile and people kind of pay attention and come in or look around and see what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So the publisher approached you, the radio show yeah. approached you, sensing a trend here. I'm hoping. Yeah. I like it. That's really yeah, cool. It was, the book was really a gift. That was just a really fabulous thing. I notice in business, and we have this too, it's a constant to remain relevant in, yes. in your customer's eyes. Yeah. It's an ongoing thing. Yeah, yeah it's, you can never stop, really. Well, I think that the really important thing is, and this is what I do all day long, is I listen to people and I look for patterns and I like to see what's going on, you know, what is causing this in this individual. But when you go from individual to individual over 20 years, you start to see a systematic pattern. And so I think, you know, just listening to people and listening to what their needs are and, and figuring out how to help them solve their problem keeps what, it, what we do relevant. You know, if I were to stop listening and just kind of go into my own head about, oh, I'm going to just, I have this idea, you know, and I'm just going to do this thing, but it has no relevance to what people need, then I'm irrelevant. You know, but of course there are visionaries who create things that people don't even know they need. Like I didn't, we didn't know we needed like a iPhone, smartphone, yeah. iPod, right? Exactly, and now we feel like we can't live without it. Right. I think there are a couple things that we do also unique in our clinic is some insurance companies have what we call telemedicine benefits. So we're seeing more and more that people who can't get into the clinic can do their doctor visits via Skype. So we're doing that and, I, and we really love that so we can help people all over, you know, the country and, and the world. Are there different regulations by state 
yes. when you're doing telemedicine? Well, if we're talking to someone in an unlicensed state, because naturopathic doctors are not licensed in every state, we cannot offer diagnosis or treatment. We do it as a consult. So a person, we would make recommendations or we would give them resources or, you know, et cetera, but we would not, quote, diagnose or treat. So yeah, there are those regulations that are really important to abide by, again, for patient safety. So has telemedicine been um, good for business? Yes, it's great and our docs love it because sometimes it's stressful you know for people to get in and you know they got the time thing and we're downtown Portland so there's the parking thing yeah. you know so that really that just takes a level of stress off of the patient I think which of course always makes things go much more smoothly so that's one thing that we're doing more of and then another thing we're doing is this is that uh, I was telling you about SIBO, a small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. What we do is a special, it's called a breath test. And you take home this little box and you blow, you do this whole thing where you have to blow into a, a little a kind of balloon thing. First you have to do a prep diet and then drink this little lactulose, which is a kind of um, sugary kind of thing. And then it, it tests really what the methane and the hydrogen levels are in your small intestine. We're lucky enough we have a Quintron machine here in our office, so we do the tests in-house. And we're soon going to be starting to offer this to physicians and patients who want to do this test. They'll send the test kit back to us and we will run the test in-house and then we'll send their report to either them or their doctor. Wow. And um, we're hoping that that too can be a you know, service for people who may not live in the Portland area, may live in Nebraska and they don't have access to this. We've actually um, worked with doctors in Northern California. So those are two other things that we're, we're adding in. And we have residents in our clinic who train closely with Dr. Weiner. He's our head physician and also the other co-founder of the clinic. And we're very excited to be really uh, training exemplary physicians and to do really great work. And it just helps us serve people in a, in a much more effective way. And uh, we can reach out to more people. Sounds like business is thriving. Yeah, and we have room for, for more people, so we're always we're always happy to talk to people and see how we can help them. Seems like um, the economy here is doing very well. And I have to say the Affordable Care Act got a lot of people in the door and it was a great thing for people because for people who didn't have health insurance or one thing we were always dealing with was pre-existing conditions. You know, this is like horrifying to think that they want to bring this back um, yeah. because people suffer and there's no reason they should have to wait. You know, so what was, what was happening before the Affordable Care Act, people wouldn't come in. And so once people had coverage, they started coming in. And especially in Oregon, where there's much more like universal health care, the Oregon Health Plan, we started to see people who were really sick walking through the door. You know, chronic diseases that they just hadn't dealt with because they didn't have the finances to cover it. So, you know, universal health insurance is just like, I'm hoping one day we get there so that, you know, people just don't have to stress about getting the care that they need from any licensed, certified health professional, of which naturopathic physicians and acupuncturists are. We go through very rigorous training. We take board certification and we're licensed by medical boards in, in states. So I'm just hoping we get there <laughs> so that everyone, like I said, gets the care they need. Ellen, thanks for your time. You're Thank you so much. Really awesome. lovely to meet you. Radio show, book, business, <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you.